This is a Thompson. So there's a guy named Norm Thompson. And after World War I, I think he moved around to different places. I think he was somewhere in Canada for a while. Um, but he ended up in Portland, Oregon. So Portland, Oregon, in the United States of America, um, is pretty close to where I live. And it looks like he had quite a few like tobacco shops there. So I think pipe shops, tobacco, etc. And I think there might actually still be like a Thompson cigar or something like that. Um, but he was definitely, he was a businessman. Got some um, Scotty's Bulk Blends Trout Stream in here. Nice, cheap, I like it. Lots of Cavendish, black Cavendish. But these Thompson pipes, I've kind of found them online, quite a few of them. Um, these are his, his German pipes that he made. I don't, know, I don't know exactly which company. I think it might have been Oldenkot or something. Um, so whatever, some, some German manufacturer uh, made these and he would have them stamped Thompson. This is stamped um, Selected Briar and it says Germany on it somewhere, just kind of stamping all over the place. So, you know, it seems kind of like a basket Briar quality, but of course it had Thompson on there. And it looks like he worked um, on, what do, you, what do you call those, like mail order? He, did, he had like a mail order service for um, fly fishing bait, whatever, those little flies for fly fishing. And I think at some time he probably had a mail order thing going on for pipes too. So he's probably mail order selling pipes at some point. And if you look up on Pipedia, you'll find examples of um, where Savinelli and Thompson did a bit of a collaboration. So basically Thompson would sell Savinelli's that I think he would stamp, you know, just made in Italy, Thompson on it, that kind of a thing. And it seems like he did the same thing with, um, with the company Big Ben. Um, I believe they're the, the, the place um, in Holland, the pipe maker in Holland. So interesting kind of historical stuff. This was um, basically a, a very low ball off offer on eBay. So for under $20, I was able to get this shipped all the way over here, with tax and everything. And it was a nice little restoration. So right here, there's a little crack that didn't go too far. So it was a really short crack. I was able to, of course, super glue that. And this came this kind of red color. So it was very red color to begin with. Um, but these spots with the rustication didn't really have any black on the inside. And I kind of like having black on the inside and then another color on the outside. It seems to look a lot nicer. And there were still some fills. Like you can see these four little fills right here. And they were that kind of brown woodish color that most fills are made out of. So instead of having those fills, I just pulled those out, you know, just basically took a little metal thing, pried those out, and I put in some charcoal, put some uh, super glue in there, as I do with these stem button rebuilds. And I did that all the way around um, with these little fills that are all around there. So I had some color issues. Some of the, uh, the briar here is not very red. Tried staining it red again, restaining it. Didn't really stick very well, so. There might have been some some process that I should have done, really roughened it up with sandpaper, really gone down to um, to just the raw briar or something like that. But I think it looks okay, given that it's just it's got a lot going on, you know. It's got a lot of little markings, etc. And if it was just a smooth pipe with just smooth nothing on it and had a mark on it or something or had some um, stain missing, I think I'd probably worry about it. But I think it looks okay since it's very it's nice and hidden. I do have a video up on Instagram where I show, I shine a little light and I show inside the mortise here. If you go all the way deep down from the mortise to um, where the draft hole begins again, there's a little bit of a crack, a tiny crack. And I notice as I go through a lot of these, um, a lot of these estate pipes, I find a lot of cracks. And you find that a lot of times a crack will run and it'll stop. It makes you wonder if the briar itself, if it's even guaranteed that the crack will continue over time. Maybe it'll actually just stop at a point and it won't continue on. So it's kind of what I wonder with a lot of these pipes. And this is a little bit, this might be kind of gaudy and gross, but this is actually an earring that I found a long time ago. Of course, had the sterling silver stamp on it. And I think this is a gold fill. So it's like whatever carat gold fill. And I never use it. I just had it inside a drawer for the longest time. So I actually chopped off that little, um, what do you call it, the post that the earring is on. I chopped it really short. I drilled a really small hole 
and uh, of course roughed up the sterling silver a lot, roughed up the vulcanide, and I used that five minute, uh, was it something Bob Smith Industries, I forget, but the five minute epoxy that most pie makers, I guess, use. I think they have them at Vermont Freehand too. And use that to stick it on there. You know, of course it cured really quickly. And it seems to be pretty solid, stuck on there. Obviously it didn't fall off after my buffing wheel, you know, buffed the crap out of this. And the stem was one of those fake P-lip stems to begin with. So it was a little bit wider than this. I thinned it out a little bit or narrowed it out a little bit. Um, but this used to actually just be a normal P-lip shape where it comes out a little bit more. And it's a little annoying to have a P-lip, which is a faux P-lip. It wasn't drilled from the top as, you know, P-lips you're kind of supposed to do. You're supposed to drill them from the top so that way the smoke comes out the top. It wasn't doing that, obviously. It was drilled right through. So it just looked like a P-lip and every other way it wasn't. So I decided to add a little bit more material to the top of the button and I let the bottom be that cutout that most P-lips um, come looking like. They have that cut out. Because I don't really need that portion. It's not like that portion is setting on my teeth the same way the top of the button sits on the back of my teeth. So I decided to leave it cut out. And in the future, I might actually have this as my standard button shape. All I really need is like a, a file to get in there and file it into the round shape. You know, it looks kind of interesting, looks kind of neat. Maybe later at some point I'll actually file a slot in there too, once I get the tools from Vermont Freehand. So that might be an interesting little project for 11 pipes. You know, once again, I don't really don't notice much of a difference with a slot or not. But there are people out there who like slots, so it'd be kind of interesting just to try it out, just to learn anyway. To learn how to file slots and stems. <laughs> all right, so we've kind of gone through all the details on this pipe. It's a cheap smoker, technically, and I think it's been restored to a point that it's kind of neat and fun. So maybe it'll make a nice little gift at some point, or maybe I'll just smoke it a lot. But it's really heavy. It's over two ounces. It's like 2.1 ounces. And most of my pipes are not that way. It's really going to be my only actual freehand pipe for now. But, you know, it's fun. So who knows? It might be a nice gift for someone who wants a big old heavy pipe. All right, y'all have a good night.